Hi, Brian. Um, thanks for taking part in today's uh, blog interview. I'm just going to ask you some questions. Um, okay. About the about your experience, lived experience of being a disabled person in employment. So can, can you tell me a bit about yourself and your disability? Well, my name's Brian. I'm 49 now. Um, I used to work as a law library assistant in London. Um, and now I'm working, I'm volunteering at Oxfam uh, Bookshop in Glasgow. Um, my disability is bipolar, which is an invisible disability, which I was diagnosed with in mid, my mid-30s. So I've had it for diagnosis for quite a long time. So. Thanks for sharing that. Um, the next question is, how, how does your disability affect you in the workplace? Um. I've got, I take medication now, which means that I'm usually not affected particularly badly. But if I get stressed, my adrenaline levels, which are what you need when you're stressed, um, can go too high, in which case I get a bit manic. Um, and I, I can get very dis un, unable to concentrate at work and things like that, get very withdrawn from the rest of the group at work. And um, so I need to watch that, that I don't get too stressed because my adrenaline levels just kick in and I... I get too high. And then there's lows as well, which the medication also accounts for most of the time, but it's bipolar is a cyclical thing. So you can get lows that come and um, hit you as well, and then you just don't feel like doing anything. <laughs> um, and did, did this affect you before you had your official diagnosis? Or? Yeah, it did, yeah. yeah. It, it took me a wee while to work out what was going on, yeah. So before that point, you didn't need any support in your workplace? I probably did, did actually, but I didn't know what was going on with my own brain, so I didn't know that I had bipolar, so I didn't know how to ask for help or anything. I just thought it was something going wrong with me. I didn't I didn't understand what was happening. Is, so, that, is that why at the moment you're preferring to volunteer rather than paid employment? Or? Yeah, at the moment it's a lot easier just volunteering, yeah, because I can feel... It's very calm in the Oxfam bookshop, and um, I feel less stressed in that. Yeah, yeah, well, that's really important. Have you found the application process um, quite uh, a challenge, or have you not? Yeah, it's it's, exp it's explaining how the what the gaps are for. If you see what I mean, yeah. Like, cause I've got a, I've got a three year gap, and I can't explain what I'm doing unless I mention my health. You yeah. know, so. Um, yeah, that's, that's understandable. So, in your experience, can you give me some um, good examples of good practice in the workplace where your employers been um, supporting you? Yeah, I can actually. Um, my, I used to work in a law library assistant for a big university in London, and they were great. They had me having regular contact with occupational health every four weeks. And I didn't have to have a problem to go and see them. I just had a regular check-in with them. And it made me feel really supported that they just checked in every four weeks to see how I was doing. And I could go to them at any time if I needed um, if I needed support. I could just phone them up or make an get a, an appointment. Um, and they were really good. So it was just a regular check-in with my, with my occupational health was a really good thing. Yeah, that's really positive and something that's um, good. It's really simple. Yeah. But cost effective and simple and not not actually costing anything. Not ca costing yeah. anything, no. Which is no, really exactly. important and good for employers to hear as well. Yeah. So how should um, practices be implemented into policy making in the workplace? Well, I think the best, the good, a good thing would be to have a mental health action plan as part of an organisation or a workplace, um, just to formalise, formal, make it formal the the processes that are a good practice. Like, for example, the occupational health thing that I found really helpful, just to have that as a formal policy um, in the workplace for anyone who's got a mental health disability. Yeah, that, I would think that's quite important. That's a really good suggestion and um, I, I don't know myself if a lot of organisations have that 
type of policy in place. So if they haven't, that's a really good suggestion. Um, yep, yeah, for going forward. Um, I, I'm not really sure if you have any experience of the next question, but um, what could supported employment programmes do better? Um, I don't really have experience of a, a, a definitive supported employment um, practice, but um, but with the mental health action plans, I think they should be extended to everyone in the workplace because everyone comes under stress at some point. Yeah. So mental well-being in the workplace is kind of an all-inclusive thing rather than just people who've got a recognised disability like myself. Yeah, You could extend it to everybody. Yeah. Yeah, and then that would be more inclusive for everyone. Yeah. As well. Um. So absolutely. Um. What about? I know you you don't have um first hand experience, but what about like have you heard anything about the timeframes of these supported employment programs and things like that? And um, have you got any thoughts on on that? Hey, do you mean like in terms of all the organisations implementing? Th- Things yeah, like, like timetables. Some, some support um, supported employment programs are only for a certain number of weeks, in like thirteen weeks or whatever. Uh, I be better to extend have, them. I think. Yeah. yeah. Would it help? Do you think if it was longer and just from you, you know, have the experience? How would you feel if you were on a program like that? Would it help if it was longer or? You had more support when the programme was finished. I think it, I think it would help, just given my experience of the occupational health at the university I worked at. That went on for the whole four years I was there. They never, that I was always going in every four weeks just to check up with them. And sometimes I just had to say I was fine and things were going well. But it didn't. It was nice to have it all the time. Do you see yeah. what I mean? It didn't. It was a support thing there then. Yeah, rather than just leaving yeah. me. After thirteen weeks, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that, that's a good point. Yeah, um, so um, how does being a disabled person in employment, or in your case, volunteering, um, impact on your well-being? It's really good for me because it gives me a sense of purpose and a sense of achievement when I've had a good day with customers, and I just get a sense of going out, going out to do stuff and getting involved with the public and other teammates and our volunteers in the in the bookshop. So it gives me something to do and not be stuck in the house all the time. Uh, How did you feel before you had the volunteering um, have you seen a change in how you're feeling as a as a person in it in your all round well being? I was pretty low actually because I thought I would never get back into any sort of employment or volunteering at all. I just thought I was going to be on the scrap heap a wee bit. Um so I was quite low at one point, just thinking there wasn't going to be much future for me. Yeah, so it's um, definitely made a difference. So it's definitely made a difference, yeah. How did you get from, like, you know, feeling like you weren't only able to get into employment or volunteering to actually getting that opportunity? I just applied to Oxfam. I just went in with my CV one day and said, look, I've had some health difficulties but I'd really, I feel a lot better now and I'd really like to, uh, to volunteer with you. And so I just went in with my CV and they said, that's great, you can start next week. <laughs> that's amazing. Did you have any support with that or did you just decide yeah, my, to do it? No, I just did, just did it myself. Yeah, I just thought I've got to do something because if I don't do something, it's just going to keep going over in my brain and I'm going to ruminate and stuff all the time and yeah. not do anything. That's so, a really positive example of being proactive and how doing that can change a situation for someone. Yeah. That's a really good example. Um, what do you think has been the key thing you've learned as part of your employment journey to date? I think I've learned to be more upfront because when I was younger, um, in my 30s, uh, before I got the job at the lib- as a library assistant, the job I had before, I, I knew there was something wrong and I got diagnosed with bipolar and then I didn't tell my employer. So I just used to make things up when I had to be off sick. So I would say I had the flu or I had a cold or something and my absence, absence record was really bad. Whereas if I'd said to them, I've got bipolar, 
they might have been more, I would have given them the opportunity to be more supportive, if you see what I mean. Whereas yeah. they just thought I was taking a sickie all the time. Yeah. So, well, you're aware at that time you, you're, I'm the only an employer because I've got support from like access to work and initiatives like that. Yeah. Were you aware of that at the time? No, I wasn't. No, I wasn't. No. Are, are you more aware of it now? If you, not, I've heard a lot more about it now, yeah. Yeah, so but, you, you know that support was there. If if you move into employment at some stage, is yeah. that something you would like to work towards? Or, uh, well, I'm, I'm getting support from the uh, Lanarkshire Association for Mental Health. I've got an employment support worker there, so she's really good. So we're just going to see about doing some part-time permitted work. Oh, yeah, so... Um, what other areas are you looking at in permitted work? I haven't really had, had a look yet. I was going to see if I could go back to library work again, because that's what I did before, and see if that will work. But or maybe retail, because I've been working at the bookshop. Yeah. Going into retail, you know? So, yeah, so one of the two of them. Going into employment is something you hope to do in the future, then? Yeah, um, definitely, yeah. Yeah. Um, um, look brings me to my last question um, what tips would you give employers as a as a disabled person with regards to employing and retaining a diverse workforce well I think what I was saying about the mental health action plans if they have them as something that's quite clearly you can see on their website of the organization or company then it would encourage people from a diverse background to actually apply for jobs in the first place because they would feel more confident about the organisation's ability to, to deal with any mental health difficulties that they have while they're employed with them. So I think that would be quite good, if that makes sense. Yeah, of course, yeah, yeah definitely. I think um, that's an important key message for employers. 